Hi everyone, uh, my name is Amanda Collin and I am a designer with DLR Group, Interior Design specifically. And I just wanted to start a YouTube channel to kind of share a really fun project that I have the opportunity to be working on um, for the next, gosh, like six to eight months. And it's definitely a passion project of mine. And so what my company, DLR Group, does is every year they have what's called a PDG, so a personal development grant. And anyone in the company of 1,200 people can apply for this grant. And, um, and then if they're selected, there's four people who are selected each year, then they are awarded $5,000 and 80 hours of PTO. So I was luckily um, awarded this grant, so that's super exciting. And I wanted to share kind of what my project is and because I think it's super important and I don't want this, I guess, awareness that I'm trying to, to grow to just end whenever I am done with this project in August. I want it to keep going and um, be something that people can can continue to be aware of. And so I'm gonna just, with this first um, video, I wanted to kind of explain it a little bit and um, get you guys um, on, the, on, the, on the page of where I'm at with this project so far. And then I'll be sharing my progress and other, other challenges that I may face and everything like that. So I'll, I'll dive into what it is. So it's, I've called it ADA. Um, which I'm standing, it stands for um, Accessible Design Awareness. And so as an interior designer, um, we have to be very cautious and aware of the ADA standards, the accessible standards um, for people who are in wheelchairs, blind, um, you know, hard of hearing, like all, all kinds of disabilities. And so we have to make sure to incorporate that in our, in our designs. But a lot of times the code that we have to follow is pretty bare minimum um, and sometimes not good enough. And so I want to explore the, you know, what, what people who deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis, what are the common things that they run into? What are the things that, you know, people who are in a wheelchair com constantly complain about or constantly like face those challenges and come up to those obstructions that they just cannot get through or they have to have the assistance of someone else? And it limits their ability to be independent, right? So things like that. And through this, I'm, I'm doing a set of interviews with a lot of different people from all over the country. Literally, I, I'm, I sit in Dallas, but I've got people from Seattle, um, Minnesota, Florida, uh, where else? Even France. So across the world, um, Phoenix. So it's been awesome to be able to talk to a variety of different people who are, um, you know, they they're challenged by the built environment and how it it kind of doesn't allow them to do what they should be able to do on their own all the time. So um, as part of that, like I said, the interviews, and then I'm going to be creating bios for those people. So right now I have ten, and after this week I'll have twelve different people that I've interviewed, and then um, in June, the beginning of June, I will be. Um, having this, I guess you could say it's like a pop-up or um, a temporary structure, but it's not just one structure, it'll be kind of like stations. And it's actually gonna be in downtown Dallas, outside of the AIA building, um, and AIA Dallas building. So that's um, the, the organization for architecture. Um, and so what I wanna do is have these, these structures that are set up, like for example, one with a ramp that is to code, you know, the, the slope has to be 12 inches this way, one inch up. So it's very gradual slope is what is to code. But a lot of ramps are not like that. And so, um, you know, and then have another ramp that is very steep and then have a wheelchair on site or two so that people can test this out and see for themselves. You know, the, the people who don't have to face these challenges all the time, I want pe the general public to be more aware of, oh wow, I didn't think that that would be an issue. Oh wow, yeah, that makes sense. You know, like the degree of the ramp angle is a huge thing. But then doorways are a huge problem, right? You have the thresholds that you go through and 
the bump that you have to change from, you know, inside or outside or just different finishes can be really challenging for people in wheelchairs. And so if that bump is too high, they get stuck. And the last thing you want to do is be stuck in a doorway, trying to get through, trying to hold the door open and it's, you have to wait for someone to help you. It's a mess. And so that's one of the things that I want to point out, but then also, or test, and then also even the weight of the door and the door handle, like a lever handle versus a door knob. Um, that's a big thing for my Aunt Kim. So my Aunt Kim is quadriplegic. She's been in a wheelchair since she was 16 after a terrible car accident. And so this, having been exposed to her all my life and you know see what she's had to go through, through design school, I was very passionate about ADA design and you know, designing for everyone, not just the per the people who can walk and, you know, do, do the, I guess, day-to-day -day normal tasks that you would consider, um, for an able body. But I, I just, that was one of my passions for starting this project, um, is because of her. So she definitely inspired me. And then other, other examples, you know, different things with people who are blind, projections off the wall, there's limitations for that. So having those examples and there's, I'm not going to spoil it all right now, but, um, those are some of the, the little stations I would do. And then also just having the, the posters of the different bios of the people I've been talking to and interviewing. And then also, um, just a lot of information that a lot of us are unaware of and like the statistics on how many people are disabled and how many people are mobility related disabled is mind blowing. And I just think that it's a lot more prevalent than what we would think. And you may know like one person or two people in your life that maybe have a disability or a mobility related issue, but it's, it's a lot more than you would think. And another thing too, is that it can, it can happen so unexpectedly, right? Like you, you could take things for granted and then be in a car accident and then not be able to walk for the rest of your life. Like it, this could happen to anybody. It's not something that you're necessarily born with. With some people it is, but if you're not, like it could happen to anyone. And so I think that we can't just push it off to the side and say, oh, well that doesn't deal with me so I don't care about it or I don't need to worry about it because I'm not in a wheelchair. And that's just not the right kind of thinking because eventually, whether it's old age or something, most likely you're gonna have some sort of limitation on whether it's hard of seeing or you know you have to use a wheelchair or a walker or a, or a cane or something, whether it be just later on in life or you could be temporarily disabled like an accident or a sports injury or something like that where it's you're on crutches and have to figure out how to get, you know, get around on crutches. It, it can be tough or temporarily in a wheelchair. So I'm really, really excited to be sharing this with you guys. Um, and I, it's a real big passion project for me. And so please, please follow along on my journey, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, if you want to hear more and I'll be posting some videos along the way as I create this and, um, talk about my experience. So thanks you guys.